Hi, and welcome to a brand new section in the course. In the previous section, we explored various unsupervised learning algorithms. Time series analysis and forecasting form an important part of several business domains, particularly when it comes to forecasting the demand and sales. This part is particularly valuable to businesses because the more accurately you forecast the demand, the lesser the business risk. In this section, we will understand what a time series is and how to create one. We will understand the components of a time series and its various aspects, such as stationarity, autocorrection, functions, and so on. We will also see how to make a time series stationary, detrend, and deseasonalize it. In the last two videos, we will see various forecasting techniques, such as Holt Winners and Auto Arima, that comes with the forecast package. Let's begin this video by understanding and extracting the components of Time Series and the XTS package. In this video, we will create various types of Time Series and work with the Time Series object. We will understand the characteristics of a Time Series decompose it, and extract its components. We will also see the XTS package and see how to work with it. A time series is any metric measured over regular time intervals. Common examples are the stock market indices, monthly sales data of a company, temperature measured on daily basis, and so on. R has its own way of dealing with time series objects. Let's see how to convert a numeric vector into a time series object. We use the TS function with various frequencies. The start option takes the year and month numbers. When frequency is 4, it will be quarterly time series. When it is 12, it becomes a monthly time series. However, when it comes to daily time series, I prefer using the XTS object. XTS is short for extended time series. Let's compare how daily data is handled with TS and XTS. The dates are not clear in this plot. Let's do the same with an XTS object. This time, we have a nicely laid out chart. XTS makes it convenient to work with multiple time series as well. We could create the dates and the matrix of time series as one object. Then, we will convert it into an XTS object. I prefer using Lubridate package or AnyTime package for parsing date characters to date objects. However, you may choose the as.date function as well. Let's place them in a data dot frame. That was very convenient. Filtering dates also becomes easier. It also comes with nice helper functions to deal with stock prices. It could conveniently aggregate daily data to various frequencies. Coming back to the topic, let's decompose the monthly time series to its components. Every time series consists of the seasonal, trend, and the remainder components. This plot shows one such decomposition. These components can be extracted using the STL function. Before we move to the coding challenge, let's see how an additive and multiplicative time series may look like. The main difference is the additive time series is computed as the sum of seasonality, trend, and remainder. But for multiplicative time series, it is the product of the three. You can identify this based on how the pattern varies. This is best decided 
visually by looking at the time series. Let's solve a couple of mini challenges. One, decompose the Johnson Johnson time series and plot the trend portion. The second one is convert it to XTS object and get the highs and lows on a yearly basis. Good luck. So here are the answers to the second one. If you manage that, well done.